Grace to you and peace from God our Father. Greetings to you all in the master's name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I take this privilege as a God-given privilege to share God's word with every one of us this morning. Once again, I give all the glory and honor to our God Almighty for giving, giving us this privilege even though all of us could not go to the service, to go to ch uh, churches, we are here getting chance and privilege to hear God's word. And especially this sermon is dedicated for those people who could not go to church and stay at home during this pandemic. Today, the very verse that I have taken for today's meditation is found in Galatians, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. It's verse 6 and 7. It says, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. This is the very advice Paul has given to the Colossians. So I would like to to draw your attention by uh, from this uh, very uh, verses that we need to live a life that is fullness of life in Christ. So today my topic will be fullness of life in Christ. In another sense, we can say fruitful life in Christ. How to bear a fruitful life in Christ. Otherwise, how to live the fullness of life in Christ. Suppose you are coming in the midday to, to your home after a heavy work and you feel very thirsty and you feel so sweet in your body and you feel so thirsty and when you come home you want to drink a cup of tea and you found uh, five cups of water that is one is a little filled water and half filled water and also almost filled water and full of water which cup would you take up to drink to satisfy your thirst to quench your thirst i believe and i tell you that definitely you will take the cup that has full of water then and only you will be satisfied your thirst that is what fullness if you live a life that is full if you live a life that is fruitful Definitely your church, your society, and your uh, God will definitely use you for the extension of his kingdom. But I would like to ask all of you what is draining us? What is breaking your relationship to God? There are so many uh, things that I have listed out here. I want to ask you, is your broken relationship with your family? Is breaking your relationship with God? Is your broken relationship with your husband or with your wife? Is breaking the relationship that you have with God? And is your ma a broken marriage or is your broken relationship with your children that has cut the relationship that you have with your God? Or otherwise, uh, on preparing this uh, sermon, I have come across, uh, what to say, a poster that says that there's probably no God. Now stop worrying and enjoy your life. We, in this time, in this age, we would like to enjoy our life. We would like to spend our life with the pleasures of this world. So I come across this uh, poster saying that there is probably no God. So in this very civilized time, in this very civilized age and very civilized world, people are trying to enjoy their life, forgotten what God has done in our lives. So I want to ask you, is the pleasure of this world uh, has broken the relationship that you have with God? In this very age, there are the every age group whether you are young or uh, whether you are young or you are, whether you are old, whether you are middle age, every age group has mobile 
that has lot of games that are that has lot of things to do in the in the mobile many people spend their whole day by watching mobile by spending their time in watching mobile playing playing mobile games otherwise by chatting with other friends through watch whatsapp through twitter through uh, telegram and so on the list goes on and i have a friend uh, one of my friends she said that um, uh, she is not working she speaks a uh, wonderful english and she seems to be very well educated and i asked her why are you not working why are you simply staying at home she says that i have to take care of my daughter who is studying and i say that uh, she is going to school and when she is going to school you can uh, go for job and you can earn money and she's uh, and i ask what is your mother in law doing she said that my mother in law she simply plays mobile games video games whole day she is not taking care of us she is not taking care of her grown grandchildren but she plays video games all throughout the day so it's a very shock to hear the unfortunately many people i would say many many people spend and waste their time by simply uh, wasting and uh, watching mobile games playing mobile games video games and on so i would like to ask you that by spending at your computer by spending your time and wasting your time at your mobile are you cutting your relationship with god are you cutting the relationship that make you know to live out your life not to make your life fruitful in your life so with this square all these questions i would like to enter to the first point that if you want to live a life that is full if you want to live a life that is fruitful let us walk with christ so my first point is that walking with christ walking with christ starting our uh, starting uh, our if we want to live a life that is we continuously to walk with christ we need to surrender our lives to christ that is the very very beginning until and unless we surrender our lives to christ we cannot walk with god in the bible we we heard and we know very well that noah walk with god and enoch walk with god abraham walk with god and many prophets and many people walk with god and their lives were counted as righteousness reckon them as righteousness so if we don't surrender our lives that is the very beginning of walking with christ we cannot walk with christ and we cannot live a life that is fruitful so we need walking with christ is also mean growing in christ christ intends us to grow in our faith if we don't grow our lives in faith we cannot live a life that is fruitful and when we want to continue to walk in christ there will be so many devil's plans there will be so many disturbances there will be so many barriers in our, in your lives and in my life as well if we want to do something good and if you have plan sometimes when we want to uh, work so many works in a day and if you have plan that i would finish this uh, this very work during this uh, time this week or this month definitely disturbances will come so in order not to have that disturbances we need to continuously surrender our lives by praying and we need to surrender all our plans in god's hands and his hands alone and uh, another thing to walk in christ is that not stagnating if you stagnant if you stand in one place it is it is not a symbol of growing it is not a symbol of walking continuously walking with god if you simply stand in one place you will can never grow in your lives if you see a water in one place standing always standing in one place definitely in that very place mosquitoes will be gather and flies and the that very water will be stinking 
it will smell very badly if that water doesn't flow. So in the same way, if we don't uh, grow and if we don't continuously walk, but if we simply stand in one place, if we stop growing our life regard, our life will be stinking. If you see a river that is continuously flowing, the water will be very fresh and the water will be very clear and very clean. In the same way, if we continuously walk with Christ, our lives will be fresh, our lives will be uh, clear and clean. Uh, many of you might know the, uh, the very place of a beach. If you go to a beach, that means near ocean, if you go to an ocean and if you go to the beach and stand in one place, definitely we will be sinking. We will sink and sink and sink. But if you don't want to sink in that very place, we should continuously walk in that beach. Then and only we will not, uh, we will not sink. Walk indicates that our relationship with Christ is not be to be stagnant, but to be a growing relationship. Walking with Christ is a growing relationship. And walk refers to daily conduct. If we want to live a life that is fruitful, it is not only one day, it is not only one week, it's not only one month, neither one year, but every single day. It is a daily exercise. We should always walk in God, walk with Christ every single day. If you pray very nicely yesterday and if you stop praying today, that is not growing with Christ, growing in Christ. But it is it should be a daily conduct. It should be a daily practice and daily exercise. Walking with Christ is also emphasized continuing to believe the truth about Christ. If you continuously walk with Christ, it is it emphasizes that you are believing the truth about Christ. It was Christ who saved them, so do not forsake his divine authority for any human gains. It is God and it is Christ alone that saved us, so we cannot use his name for our human gains, but we always should grow in Christ. My second point is, depend only in only on Christ Jesus. When we see the life cycle of ours or when we see the nature life cycle, it says that everyone depends on one another. Crow, crow will depend on the insects or small insects, even the small ticks to feed their own uh, children. And even um, snake depends on grasshopper, grasshopper depends on grass, and even, even all of us, we depend, we depend on something. We depend on, especially we depend on nature for our livelihood. We depend on vegetables, we depend on rice for our daily life. So in the same way, Everything depends on one another. I cannot live without depending on anything on by myself. But I depend on somebody. I depend, I depend on something for to live, to continuously live my life out. So here it says that uh, children depend on parents and parents depends on their children. Here our lives, our future, we depend on our children. And at this very, uh, when the children, when in their small age, they depend on their parents for their schooling, for their needs, for their money, whatever they want to do for their dress, for their food, and for whatever they want to have, they depend on their parents. And as I said, we depend on our children for our future. Students depend on teachers and teachers depend on the students. If students don't pay their fees, uh, teachers cannot get their salary and teachers cannot come to school and teach them. And if teachers don't come to school, students cannot gain the knowledge. Leaders depend on learners and the learners depend on the leaders.
not only that poor people depend on rich rich people and rich people depend on the poor people house owner depends on watchmen and watchmen depends on the house owner we all depends on nature and one another if a house if a rich man uh, de doesn't depend on watchmen he can never sleep properly and if a watchman uh, doesn't depend on the rich man or the house owner he cannot get the salary so we all depend on one another if a if an out if an auto if a rickshaw driver doesn't get any rich people to sit on he can never earn the money enough for the day and if there is no rickshaw if there is no auto uh, auto rickshaw the rich people cannot travel from one place to another so we all depend on one another but above all we need to depend on god our christ who gives everything that i have mentioned whether the rich or poor or students or teacher or learners or leaders or parents or uh, children or all the animals every vegetable everything that we have on this world is given by our god and our christ alone so we above all on depending on everything we have to depend on christ alone if we don't depend our life on christ if you depend on your own strength we can never and ever be successful in our lives it says that proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 it says that do not lean on your own understanding so we need not to depend on our own understanding but we need to uh, depend and trust on our christ who gives everything on this world with this i want to enter to my third point and the last point that is rooted and built up in Christ. Walking with Christ every day is very important. And depending on God is trusting in God is very, very important to live a life that is fruitful. And the most important is also that rooted and built up in Christ. It says that in verse 7, rooted and built up in Christ in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. It says that we need to root and build up our life in Christ. It says that uh, we need in if we want to live that is uh, our lives fruitful, we need to root it our lives deep down the be deep down below. Say uh, an apple tree, otherwise say an orange tree. If we, many people, many of us, we have seen an orange tree that bears a lot of oranges. Until and unless that very plant, until and unless that very orange tree, if we don't uh, plant in deep down the ground, it can never grow and bear fruits. If we simply swap, if we simply um, plant that uh, plant, they can they they will be fallen away when the strong wind comes. In the same way, if we don't have a good foundation, we can never bear a fruits. That is roots below, fruits above. Here. I would like to also mention that uh, now in, in these days, in this very age, we have seen um, skyscrapers houses. We have a lot of buildings that has a lot of stories, that has a lot of floors. There are so many hundred floors, more than hundred floors uh, buildings are standing in our cities. But I want to ask you, Will that building be standing firmly until unless they have a good foundation? Never, and it is never and no. So if you want the, your building, your house to be very strong and standing for a long time, we need to dig deep down the ground and root it, the foundation in a very, very firm way, then and only that we can build up the building in a very very high levels 
in the same way our lives also. So if we want to live a life that is fruitful, we need to uh, deep down to root, we need to uh, grow our, uh, we need to have a good foundation, the biblical foundation, the spiritual foundation that I am talking. We need to know the biblical truths. We need to have the experience of Christ in our lives. Until unless you have you uh, have accepted Christ as your personal friend, as your personal savior, it is very, very difficult to experience all these things. We cannot grow our lives. We cannot bear our fruits in life. So please, I would like to request and urge all of us, including me, that we need to have a very, very good foundation. Then only our lives will be able to grow and uh, build up and also bear fruits. Friends, if you want to, uh, if you want, whenever you want to have a good foundation, whenever you want to have a, a rooted your life in spirit, there will be so many temptations that you will come across. When you try to come close to the Lord, to, you give your life and your heart to Christ. Until unless we give our lives, we give our hearts to Christ, we can never draw closer to you. Satan will be there to hinder you all up and down like a roaring lion, devouring whom he may consume, opposing all good and all right. Many temptations, many satans will come and devour you, disturb you. Even your the satan maybe might be your own sister, it might be your own friends, it might be your own neighbors who may simply try to uh, devour you, to deviate your mind, not to do good things in your lives. The song says that have you trials and temptations. The song, the, the song asks, we know this song every well. What a friend we have in Jesus. In the very verse we it says that it asks, have you trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. If you have any troubles in your life, if you have any trials in your lives, don't be discouraged. If you have any trouble in your life, don't be discouraged. Take everything to the Lord in prayers. That's why always I mention that prayer, prayers in tears is very, very important. So whatever troubles that you face, whatever temptations that you face, it might be from your own children, it might be from your own parents, it might be from your own partners that may try to tempt you not to do good things, not to grow your life in Christ, not to bear good fruits in your life. But it, it says, the song says that the song is giving us a very wonderful solution that we should take everything to God in prayer. It says, it, it also asks that can we find a friend so faithful who will all a sorrow share? It asks, can we find a friend so faithful? You, your own friends, your own uh, brothers and sisters may fail you, but Jesus never fails. Amen. Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. He is the only one who knows our every weakness. How strong we are, how weak we are, how fragile we are. God knows everything. So take it to the Lord in prayer. And it also says that, Do thy friends despise and forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. It says, it says that, Is your friends despise you? Is your friends forsaken you? Whatever it may be, you can take everything to the Lord. In his very arm, God will take care of you. God will shield you and he will give you rest. He will give you a solace. So we are having and we're worshiping a wonderful God 
who can give us rest, who can give us all the solutions, who can give us all the answers. So let us go to God and let us uh, continuously walk with God. Let us depend on God and let us root it our life in God and also build up in God. Then and only we will be able to wear a fruitful life. Jesus is the head over every power and authority on earth. He is the authority. Jesus rose from the dead, which gave him power over death. He is the victory. Finally, Jesus is the one that forgives. He is the redeemer. So we are worshiping a God who is at the highest authority. We are worshiping a God who rose from the dead, who is the victorious God. And God, God our God is the only God who forgives our sins. And he is the redeemer. So let us uh, continuously grow in Christ and let us live a life that is fruitful. May God bless all of us.